Hey guys, what's going on? Rocket Cat here, and today we are talking about assists. Assists in Moonbreaker are powerful abilities that you pick at the start of every single match. The game chooses three pairs of two assists from what is currently a pool of 14 different assists. The developers have mentioned that they intend on adding more assists with each season, and as the assist, build grow, assist pool grows, uh, there is also the possibility that some assists get rotate, rotated out for a season. In this video, we will cover every single one of those assists, including an explanation of how they work and some tips on using them optimally. Instead of giving assists a 1 out of 10 rating like I did for the unit video, I will instead be putting them into one of three categories. Top picks, second picks, and side picks. If an assist is a top pick, this means you should probably look at the assist pair and possibly pick it regardless of what it's partnered with, but you'll still need to assess whether it's actually the right assist pair for your roster, the map, your opponent's captain, etc. If an assist is a second pick, that means you can treat this assist as a top pick if there are no top picks available, and generally they make convincing cases to pick an assist pair over another. Side picks, on the other hand, are more situational assists that will rarely, if ever, be the singular reason for picking an assist pair. Most of the time, you're only picking these assists because of their paired assist. Okay, that's it. Let's get started. Charged Downer Shield has a cooldown of 4 turns and is used to give an ally invulnerable for a turn. Invulnerable is a keyword that reduces all damage to it to zero. Note that it is still possible to proc effects that happen on hit, such as Snarling's Sticky Mucus Immobilization effect, which does not require damage. Nano Shield is a great effect, useful in a bunch of situations. For instance, you may have a unit positioned aggressively and want to keep it alive for continued aggression on your next turn. Or you might just need to buy a bit of time in a close race in a close race to rush down each other's captain HP. It can also just generally seriously mess with your opponent's plans on the turn that it is used. Nano Shield is an assist that you don't want to use all the time when it's off cooldown, but it retains its usefulness at all phases of the game. Ideally, you should engineer your approach with a strong Nano Shield supported engagement every four turns, but there are simply too many variables to discuss it in a comprehensive manner and whether or not you get good use of Nano Shield ultimately comes down to your tactical abilities. All told, Nano Shield is a second pick assist for me. It is absolutely a strong assist, but it doesn't quite have enough going for it to warrant a top pick. Cinder Infusion has a cooldown of three turns and is used to gain three Cinder and restore one health to your captain. This is a straightforward assist that just gives you way more flexibility throughout all phases of the game, but especially in the early and mid game. A turn 3 Cinder Infusion on an aggro list, for instance, is simply, essentially doubles your Cinder pool for the turn and can let you pull off some decisive rush plays. The extra healing to your captain is nice and come in clutch, but ultimately it's just a small bonus. Cinder Infusion is one of the best assists because of the flexibility it gives you to do whatever you want. Whether you want to deploy units, reinforce, or use abilities, Cinder Infusion has your back. Note that if you're just using Cinder Infusion to reinforce, then you do get a better bang for your buck with Stowaway, which has a cooldown every two turns instead of every three turns. As the game approaches the late game, Cinder Infusion can overstay its welcome, Unless you happen to have a ridiculously expensive set of abilities on the board, you're unlikely to need the extra Cinder all the time. Cinder Infusion is nevertheless a top pick assist for pretty much any roster. But other assist pairs can win out over Cinder Infusion if it happens to be paired with a lackluster assist. Corrosive Particles has a cooldown of 3 turns and is cast in a large AoE circle. Units caught in the circle gain the Corrosive Particles effect which increases the damage they take by one. This is an effect that lasts just one turn. Corrosive Particles is extremely strong and personally my favorite assist. You can never argue with damage and similar to Amplifier Bittle's ability, its power level scales when paired with units with Rapid Fire or Pummel, effectively increasing their damage by plus two since they attack twice. 
It also gets you some extra combat tricks, such as the ability to pierce a 1 damage poison from Toxoid into an armored unit, or letting Maximus proc his passive on armored units. Corrosive Particles is an assist you want to wait and use for max effect. Generally speaking, it can be a much more advanced assist, since to use it optimally, you should have a strong understanding of all the damage figures on the board and how Corrosive will influence it. I've seen plenty of instances where Corrosive gets wasted by my opponent because they're just using it for overkill when sequencing attacks differently could have led to multiple model wipes instead of just one. Lastly, I'll say that Corrosive Particles never becomes irrelevant at any phase of the match. Whether it's turn 3 or turn 30, Corrosive Particles can have a dramatic impact. All told, Corrosive Particles is easily another top pick assist for me. Disruptor Beam has a cooldown of two turns and is cast in a large AoE circle. Units caught in the circle are pushed away from the circle's center. Disruptor Beam is a fairly average assist that can be situationally useful, but will only rarely give you a decisive play. Its cooldown is quite solid, giving you a strong amount of reposition, and it lets you do things like push units into range, attack, and then give me the melee unit get the melee unit to safety. It also lets you, for instance, move around your own immobile units or your opponent's immobile units, such as Aegis Sentinel, pushing them out of the fray if they're your opponents or pushing them back into the fray if they are yours. All told, Disruptor Beam is easily a side pick assist. Nevertheless, the added repositioning you get will certainly help you control the flow of the match. Hey everyone, I just want to take a moment away from your time to tell you that I plan to make a bunch more high quality Moonbreaker content coming up and we already have stuff in the queue for the two weeks that we have before release. We have a bunch more videos coming so please, if you like what you're seeing, hit that likes button and if you want more, hit that subscribe button. Escape Hatch has a cooldown of three turns and is used to randomly deploy the most expensive unit in your bridge for free and the model takes two damage. By randomly deploy, it means that you cannot choose where the deploy happens, but it will still only happen in your captain's deployment range. Escape Hatch is probably one of my ultimate favorite assists, but it's ultimately very rarely a top or even a second pick for me. It is a high risk, high reward assist that can shift the balance of power on the map dramatically in the early phases of the match trading out a bit of HP for fast deploys of potentially valuable units, or letting you stem the tide of an angro list to survive long enough to get to your late game strategy. That said, as long as your captain is reasonably close to the front, it's possible that the deployed unit gets plopped right in the middle of danger. That all said, for aggro rush rosters, the first use of escape hatch on turn 3 can be extremely decisive, leading to turn 4 wins. Lastly, I'll mention that Escape Hatch is essentially useless in the late game once most of the deployments are done. All told, I am going to make an entirely, de entirely new category for Escape Hatch. It's a wildcard pick assist. It could easily be a second pick, a top pick, or a side pick depending on the matchup, rosters, map, or really whatever variable you want to add. The only thing you know for certain is that picking escape hatch is a great way to get yourself a spicy match. Ion Storm has a cooldown of 3 turns and is cast in a large AoE circle, reducing accuracy of units caught in it by 40% for a turn. Ion Storm can make for some nice turns where your opponent has severely reduced offensive potential. While your opponent will have less effective basic attacks, they'll still be able to lay into you with damaging abilities and assists, so do keep that in mind. I've also seen a lot of players use Ion Storm at the end of their turn, where they've already taken some hits from Retaliation or Broken Vengeance. So make sure if you are going to use Ion Storm at the end of your turn anyway, that you sequence it before any of your opponent's retaliation effects could occur. All told, Ion Storm is quite impactful, but still a side pick assist for me, and like the Strapper Beam, I'll usually only have it if paired with a stronger assist. Lifeline has a cooldown of 3 turns and is used to restore 5 health to an ally with 5 health or less. 
This is a pretty simple ability that you can pretty much just use whenever you happen to have a unit with 5 health or less. And it certainly can have its moments where your opponent just doesn't manage to kill a unit and you get to keep something alive and use them for another turn. It is also very useful when going for a win with Furia, since you're able to keep her alive with Lifeline. But in general, for a damage soaking assist, I'd rather have Charged Nano Shield. There's also no telling whether your opponent is even going to let a unit survive, as a lot of damage towards the mid to late game tends to be fatal, a fatal concentration of firepower. Note that you can use this on your captain, but your captain has to have 5 health or less. So while it can come in clutch in a tight captain HP race, it's rarely useful as a captain healer. All told, Lifeline is simply a side pick assist. That's it, let's move on. Medical Recall has a cooldown of 3 turns and lets you choose an allied crew to recall to the bridge, restoring 2 health to it in the process. This is essentially Nekohual's evacuate ability, but with less healing and you could use it anywhere on the map. Like Evacuate, Medical Recall can be used for some fancy tricks with Astra, where you bounce and redeploy a unit on the same turn to get an extra action out of it. It can also let you reposition immobile units or any unit that is just in over its head. The downside, of course, is that you have to pay for the unit's deployment cost again to get it back on the field, but this isn't such a rough, a deal. This isn't such a rough deal for Astra. Medical Recall is probably never a top pick for me, and among all the assists, it will probably be one of the least used side picks. That said, the devastating potential of comboing Medical Recall with Astra's Into the Breach means that Medical Recall is probably a second pick in that context. Orbital Strike has a cooldown of 4 turns and deals 3 damage to all units in a fairly large area. Probably the most complained about assist, Orbital Strike can be intensely feels bad man to go up against, leading to a lot of model wipes on one turn or just generally chipping away at any list as the game goes on. In fact, the existence of Orbital Strike is probably one of the main reason, reasons that turtle strategies just aren't that popular, since it can be such a hard counter and players often pick Orbital Strike if it comes up. So many buffing effects in the game rely on auras or proximity that it's just not really achievable in many situations to space out your units to reduce the effectiveness of an opposing orbital strike. That all said, if your opponent has not revealed their assist yet by turn 4, you may wish to preemptively position your units and generally keep an eye on your opponent's orbital strike cooldown once it's revealed. That all said, Orbital Strike's impact in a match is sometimes not all that important, since some games are already decided by the time it gets to turn 4. Or at least, at the very least, Orbital Strike isn't going to stop the game from imminently snowballing. Orbital Strike excels as the game goes on and the attrition wars settle in, and in many cases it's pretty much impossible to out-attrition a player with Orbital Strike when you don't have it yourself. Orbital Strike is also an evergreen assist that is useful through all phases of the match. I think a lot of players have Orbital Strike as their top pick, and I'm going to say it's a top pick as well, but honestly when it comes to damaging assists, I'd usually rather have Corrosive Particles, which allows for a bit more of a subtle approach to damaging what you need in the exact amounts you need at the right time, rather than Orbital Strike which is kind of just, you know, a catch-all. Plank has a cooldown of one turn, meaning you can use it on every one of your turns. It restores one health to an ally or deals one damage to an enemy that you choose. Again, you can never argue with damage and Plank is undoubtedly a fantastic assist. It can be particularly useful in conjunction with poison, allowing you to poison and then Plank to white models. It can also be quite useful to get Astra the last hits she needs by plinking when they are at 2 health and then killing them off with Astra. It's also useful to just generally slowly grind at persistent threats on the board that you just couldn't deal with otherwise, whether that's a Maximus or a Florio, and it'll generally help you get ahead of Attrition Wars. Plink is a very popular assist and is probably a top pick for many players, but it's a second pick for me. I'd still rather have Corrosive Particles, 
but in the absence of other top picks and with a good companion assist, Plink easily wins me over a lot of the time. It's a very reliable assist that you get to use every single turn to make a small adjustment to the game state that can sometimes be absolutely decisive. Stasis Field has a cooldown of 4 turns and is used to stun a unit for a turn. This is like having a single target Peacemaker Blom that you can use every 4 turns anywhere on the map, except this can also be used on the opponent Captain, allowing for some devastating crowd control plays. I've also happened to see in a, ga a game where t a turn 4 stun was just what the Doctor ordered to stem the tide of an Aegro Astra from advancing way too close for comfort, shutting down a decisive into the breach in the face. Generally, Stasis Field is a second pick for me. It can be useful whether you're on the aggressive or defensive end, and generally the ability to stun the enemy captain once every 4 turns is what makes this especially powerful. Stimburst has a cooldown of 2 turns and is cast in a modest AoE. Allies in the radius can move 50% farther this turn. Stimburst is situationally very strong and its effect stacks with units that have fast. It can be very useful for kiting melee units or for getting melee units into the backline quickly, and it's especially useful to get Exterior into the fray as fast as possible. Thus, I'm usually more likely to pick Stimburst if I have Exterior or a melee heavy roster, but even then, Stimburst is a side pick for me. Once you and your opponent are butting heads in the middle of the map, Stimburst is often not really getting very much value, very often. That said, on an Exterior roster, it can be a very convincing second pick, rather than a side pick. Stowaway has a cooldown of 2 turns and reinforces when it's cast. Stowaway is a fantastic assist, especially for Zax and Exterior. On Astra, you can usually reliably get all the reinforces you need, and having too many units clogging up your bridge on Astra can easily be a disadvantage since you're less likely to proc boost morale multiple times on a critical unit. But for Zax and Exterior who need to spend a whopping 3 Cinder to re reinforce, Stowaway makes for the most impactful assist in terms of Cinder efficiency in the earlier parts of the game. That said, Stowaway does become completely useless once you, your reserve is empty. Thus, towards the late game, Stowaway is, well, just a dead assist. Nevertheless, on Zax and Exterior, Stowaway is still probably one of the top picks for me, since it lets you save a ton of Cinder, can bail you out of terrible starting bridges, and generally can be used to weather the storm of unfavorable draw RNG. That said, absolutely not a top pick, possibly not even a second pick on Astra, where you're better off learning to get good at getting last hits with Astra. The last assist is Vortex Beam, which has a cooldown of 2 turns and is cast in a fairly large AoE circle, moving units caught in the area together. This is essentially a global version of Zax's Gravity Disc, and the opposite of Disruptor Beam. Just like Disruptor Beam, Vortex Beam is a side pick assist for me. That said, everything I've said about Disruptor Beam also applies here. But I will just note that Disruptor Beam is generally much better at pushing two units away from each other, whereas Vortex Beam is better at pulling units together. Thus, if you're trying to synergize with a lot of AoE on your list, Vortex tends to be better. If instead you're trying to keep enemy melees off your range units, Disruptor tends to be better. And that, my friends, was every single assist in the game hitting the Moonbreaker launch for September 29th. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you like what you saw, smash that like button. Take care.